that box? That's a good, very good question. Let's see. Oh, see, it goes away. So now, now we're here. So, and we've got nobody watching us. So we'll see if anyone joins. And I'll see if I can find, uh, <laughs> I see if I can works. follow, uh, I'll see if I can follow along with the chat. So in case people have comments. I feel, I don't want to be, it's so far away, I can't see it. It's still zero? <laughs> it is still zero. So nobody loves me. So we, we shall see what happens. But I don't know how they, I've never gone live on YouTube to know how they get announcements when I'm, uh, when I'm live. <laughs> All right, well, this is embarrassing. So we're going we're gonna to stop for a second. No, it says five. Oh, hey, we've does got it, people. I don't know. Does it say five people? Yeah, it does say five. Now it's seven. Oh, and we got Kim saying hi. Hi, Kim. Who's Kim? Kim Zapp. She was the first person that guessed that I was with you. Is this like blinding people or making me look? And Katie's here. Oh, that's and Kate. Karen And Karen Donnelling is here. In Florida? Yep, Katie in Florida. Oh, Karen Katie. Donnelling Katie's in San Francisco. Katie's the girl. Absolutely. Lady. And I'm trying to figure out how to see this so I don't, not trying to read the chat up here. Hey, Harry Hemstone, my insulator expert. And why can I not see? I watched that, the insulator? Yep. Is the insulator guy is watching? Yep, that's Harry. Hey, insulator guy. I knew you were South Jersey. I know that accent. I'm South Jersey too, so that's not an insult. It's like, I know he's from my neck of the woods. I recognize your accent. He lives in Delaware. So I will, I will give, well, I will give that, but he knows the area. It's Absolutely. Delaware Valley accent. There you go. Okay. It, it, it's a, I haven't recognized the accents yet. Well, I cover my, I, you know, I, I try not to sound too South Jersey. I'm not that I'm... So hello, everybody. As you can figure out, I'm with Scott from the old Curiosity Shop it's here. It's great. And I, we figured we would not uh, fit if we did a, um, if we tried to do a... Uh, Counter, a kitchen counter hall. I don't think uh, he and I would fit next to each other at yeah, the counter. It's a little skinny galley, so, uh, galley. A little galley kitchen, but it's a beautiful kitchen. It's a beautiful building. When's the building? When was the building built? It's in the Beaux Arts style, 18. Oh. 90. That clock, and, ignore. And we've got the clock going um, in the background. 1890 something, 98. Right. Now, this isn't my, where do I look? Uh, look in the camera on the side. The, over here? Yeah, so in, the black, in that little black section. Okay. So if, where I just covered everybody up, that's where you're looking, is right there. Okay. And then I'm trying to read the comments, but I, I want to switch to read the comments on my phone, but I have, my video hasn't popped up yet. So. Well, while he's figuring that out, because this is all new to me, it's exciting. And uh, so we're here in Philadelphia, and we had, um, a, we had a great day today. We're going to tell you what we did today, uh, who we met and we're going to show you a few things that we bought out of a house. Ooh. <laughs> trying to figure out how to make still... the comments go away because we've got the comments here now too. But we'll try and do both. The comments are scrolling right across uh, Scott's face. So, you know, the more comments you have, the more I don't get to see him. Uh, but, yeah, it's so... It's not a bad thing. A little, a little starstruck. Oh, thanks, Julie. That's sweet. Uh, you must be starstruck by him, not by me. No, I can't... Let, uh, I don't know. I can't even see... I've never gone live before. This is my first live, and it's on, I, like, this is Patrick's show. I don't, I can't, I'm not even sure where I'm supposed to look. And he, and he was actually kind of funny about it because he I said, was nervous. He was I feeling was. nervous. He needed I to get his it. coffee and everything. I said, oh, is my face, should I, am I shiny? <laughs> Do I need to? I felt like FDR doing a fire, a live fireside And we chat. are next to the fireplace, so we are kind of doing a we fireside are. chat. I, I'm probably about as heavy as FDR, but you know. He, he is not. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so Harry's saying hello to everybody. So I'm tr I apologize for looking down, but I'm trying to do my chat. I don't have my normal setup. I had my, my uh, lights, but I didn't bring them in. So we're using Scott's lights, which are great, but I don't have my computer. So I'm trying to do things through two phones and um, I've never done this part before. So I've gone live on YouTube without StreamYard, which I already feel like I'm in, in completely new territory. Uh, and then I'm trying to follow the comments and everything. So and we're not ignoring. Like if you're making, if you're saying things, I can't. It's this tiny. I can't see it. Yeah. You know, so I, I mean, that's why I wanted to make sure because I'm having a hard time seeing it do too. You wear contacts? I do, and do. I probably need like I need my uh, bifocals to be able to see that at this point. But well, so we got I'm, a couple new people. So we'll say hello to a few that I missed. Pat Sarver, thanks for joining us, Pat. Uh, oh, Vicky's here. I was just uh, Vicky was texting me earlier today. Um, Julie, also one of the people who figured out where we were. Annette, from, coming in from Illinois. Say, I'm not in Illinois anymore, Annette. Now I'm in Philadelphia, but I've got, I've got uh, Scott with me. 
Dawn. Uh, she is on my agenda for later in the week. She is the Just One More Dachshund, the fundraiser, uh, Doxy fundraiser. Uh, I found a couple cool things that I'll be adding to the fundraiser, uh, uh, Dawn. And let's see, Angela Marksberry, also from Illinois. Thanks, Angela. Uh, Pam is coming in. Pam Avery, thanks so much for joining in. Glad you found the video. Pam's Electric pl Eclectic Place. I always want to make sure I don't miss people. Lynn, Lynn, thanks for coming in, Lynn. Mama J. Oh, Mama J grew up in Bergen County, New Jersey. Bergen County, New Jersey. Yes, that's that's North Jersey, really. Yeah, Bergen. And she County. said now she lives in Northwest New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So I, I so New Jersey from here wraps in what way? Like, what if we crossed into Camden? Is that the southern part of? New Jersey or that yeah, the north? Yeah, Camden would be... See, all right, we're not going to go on and on, but... No, we debated for 20 minutes what defined the Midwest on my show, my show Ew, last week. Well, so this, you, you know, we've got the East Coasters a, covered there's now. still a debate whether there... Okay, there is a North Jersey and a South Jersey. There's kind of a debate as to whether there's a Central Jersey or not. But basically, and the accent... South Jersey, we have a South Jersey accent. Okay. North Jersey, it, you can hear the accent. You, there's a different accent in, within the state, but okay. that's not really what you asked me. So, but but Bergen County is what I would consider North Jersey. North Jersey, okay. So now we've got Dawn saying she grew up in Monmouth County, but that's in Illinois, isn't it? No, Monmouth County's in Jersey. I didn't know Dawn. Yeah, I didn't know you lived in Jersey. You've lived everywhere. You lived in France. You lived in Illinois, you live in Maryland. You, I think you did live in DC. I know you worked in DC. That's North Jersey, right? And then Monmouth County. Monmouth County. Okay, so we've got another New Jersey. Uh, Harry's saying, good place to source for collectibles and antiques. New Jersey is. is an old state, just like PA and Delaware. And it is the most densely populated state in the nation. We're packed. Oh, I didn't know that. The most densely populated is Jersey. And so when you say we, you are from Jersey, but you are we are currently in Philadelphia. We are in Philly. I am like a, yeah. Yes, Jersey native born, yeah, but I'm right across the river. Philly, Philly shares the border. Pennsylvania, the Delaware River is the um, border between New Jersey and Pennsylvania. So Vicky's saying she was from Hawaii and now Vegas. Uh, let's see, we've got a question for Scott. Scott, tell us the Dizzy Gillespie story. This is not supposed to be about me. We're here. No, we're, we're about both of us. We're, we're okay. going we're to we're show some stuff that we got today. Believe. We're going to record some videos that'll probably be a little bit longer. We're not going to do this for super long. Okay. But appreciate you guys joining in. But I, now I I'm curious. I can't believe someone remembered. Um, the year was 1981. I was a freshman in high school. The week before school, oh. I was a pretty good trumpet player, and I showed some talent with improvisation. No, I, you know, I was okay. The band director at that time did the cruise ship circuit and knew all the jazz musicians. Dizzy Gillespie, they managed to get him to come to do a jazz, to do a concert with the jazz band. The week a few weeks before, I had severe appendicitis. And in those days, you were in the hospital for a week. You know, I have an incision like that. Now they suck it out your belly button. But back in those days, the, you were in the hospital for long. Anyway, I'm all stitched up. And I was told, you will not play that trumpet at the Dizzy Gillespie concert. Well, I was heartbroken because I knew who he was. And... I went anyway to hang around in the, so what they let me do is I'm on stage playing air trumpet. I was not allowed to blow. So when I say I played, I was supposed to if I didn't have that appendix scar. But what was so cool is when we were in the band room, when Dizzy Gillespie arrived, he didn't want a dressing room. He just walked in like he walked in off the street and he talked to all of us kids. I'm like this, I knew about Bebop and Thelonious Monk and Charlie Parker and all that. And um, he just walked right in with the bent horn, you know, trumpet. And I remember before we went on stage, he said, you know, does anybody have a comb? If you, I don't know if you remember, Dizzy had hair that was, that, that was very distinct. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, one of us handed him a comb and he combed his hair. And he signed all of our programs and out we went. And he said, now who's the one that's not supposed to play? And I'm like, it's me. And um, he got the biggest kick. 
And we did a Night in Tunisia and all the big things that he, you know, the compositions he was known for. And I was up there just like pretending I was playing. I did not toot one note, but I was on stage with Dizzy Gillespie. That I, I is pretty I was, impressive. I was 14, freshman, what are you, 14 when you're a freshman in high yeah, school? Yeah, that felt right. Well, that's pretty impressive. I, that was fun of you to ask, the, to ask me to tell that story. And it was... I feel very lucky to have met, you don't often get to meet an innovator, a brilliant, brilliancy is when you, the first to create out of nowhere, and Bebop was just a one. we were just listening to Bebop a little mm -hmm. while ago. So you played the trumpet at that age? Yeah. So did I. Very good. I did. Oh, you were a trumpet player? Yes. I didn't know that. I, I haven't played it since high school, but yes. I actually, technically I played the cornet. Because yeah, my brother, my brother played the cornet, and my parents were too cheap to buy me another instrument, so I wanted to play the French horn, and I had to play the cornet. So I was the only cornet player in the trumpet section. Cornet is a nice; it's it lighter, it has a mellower sound. Big Spiderback was a cornet player. I didn't know. That. So, yep. So I, yeah. So I did not did not have the cheeks of Dizzy Gillespie, but uh, definitely knew who the trumpet players were. But yeah, so that was like a little thing that I did not know that we we had in common. So a lot of people were saying that that was very cool, Mama J. And oh my God, that's so cool, Scott. That comes from Julie at AJ's Retro. Uh, it was Katie, great. It was a wonderful. Oh my team. goodness, I would have died. What an amazing story. Oh, he was one. He was so. I have the program with the autograph. It was great. So we got a few new people that uh, joined in. Uh, so we got an, a New Englander. There was a debate earlier whether New England, uh, new, uh, whether Philadelphia falls within New England or Mid Atlantic. No, not New England. Whether we are the Northeast. Oh, Northeast. Or right. Mid Atlantic. So I think we hear. Sam is in New Hampshire, so he, New he owns the New England. That's New England. Uh, so yeah, we've got Northeast and New England in Sam. So hello, Sam. Uh, and if people Sam? do not follow Sam, um, he has the channel Dining at Sea, and he is personally responsible for my obsession of travel menus. It's all his fault, all that channel's fault. So on Instagram, Dining at Sea, follow that one, and there's some great eye candy in there. And someday, Sam will travel again, and he will start adding to that collection. But for now, he hides out in New Hampshire, and evidently they don't eat there because there's no new menus going on to the Dining at Sea channel. But uh, Dana's in the house. Thanks so much for joining us, Dana. And let's see, Christina Taylor. Thanks so much for joining Chris. Uh, Victoria's here uh, saying aloha to Karen. I'm not on StreamYard, so I can't get the comments to pop up on the screen. So I do apologize. So you guys just have to follow up in the... Uh, Follow up in the chat. I can't see anything. My whole face is covered up with yeah, all these the, things. The comments so just I, keep coming. I, I was trying I to might, turn off the comments I, and I'm I can't figure out sure how to do looking. that. Because I can't see anything. I'm not even sure where I'm looking. Oh, we got we got a little flirtation from Book Bewitched, my favorite men, hot dang, eye candy. Woo! You need oh. you need your glasses checked if Man. if I'm a part of the eye candy. No. He he he's good he, for he's... you, but uh let's see. Um let's so so Sam needs to go get a scanner out of storage. So yes, that's entirely what I was planning. I'm guilting him into posting more things onto his Dining at Sea channel. So thanks, Sam, for catching on to that passive-aggressive party of one. Uh, Sue is in the house, stopped in to say hello. So happy to see you together. Thank you for joining us, Sue. And uh, let's see. Oh, Auntie Christie must be in the house. I missed it. But so Auntie Christie's here. Uh, and so, okay, Auntie Christie. Let's see. We, we're going to showcase some things. Um... There we go. We've got our first little sneak. So does anyone recognize what that is? Let me give you a little bit. We, we've, if you follow George, if you follow uh, Scott, he's talked about these before. And, and it's, not very it, often. it's not an epileptic Santa, although that's what Scott seems to be re recreating right now. Uh, but it is a candle. Well, tell them. Tell Okay, yeah, we can back up a we little wanna bit. We want to say, we want to, do you want to tell them no, about our experience today? No, because you, 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 you introduced it. We did go sourcing today, uh, we, so we had a great opportunity. I came into Philadelphia, went to Adamstown yesterday, and at the uh, suggestion of Scott, I stopped at Mad Hatter Antiques and spent multiple hours there. I uh, did a couple other places, and so I got in late last night, and today, so we couldn't do any sourcing yesterday. So we went to uh, kind of a unique opportunity that Scott had. Uh, and so everything we're gonna show you is just like, a, a, we're doing a little snippet, a little, a little sneak peek. We'll try and film some actual videos that we'll post onto our channels later. But it was a, an individual's home here within Philadelphia, an old Philadelphia row house. And uh, something that Scott had met previously. Uh, then that, the, 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 well, a subscriber 
called, wrote to me and said that she knew the lady and would I like to come and, and see what she had? And I said, yes. So I went uh, last week. Yeah, I went last week and spent three hours. They were delightful. A lovely couple. And she said we could say her name. Yes. Was it Diane's... So, so Diane's... Obsession. Diane's no, den of, of uniquities. Yes. Which I thought was phenomenal. So if you know the den of iniquities, she turned it into Diane's den of uniquities. And so we... So I went... That was her name back in the day. She's not been... She's not been... Uh, Reselling, yeah. or she's not in the biz so, in the biz anymore. So that's but, what old So don't go hunting for her. No, no, no. But, but she, it was so like when you get, there's nothing like being invited into the home of someone who has spent a lifetime, and she could sit in the chair, and she, there must have been, there was so much to see, and there was a story to tell about everything, and it's really a privilege to be invited into a person's home like that. And, and she's um, a self-proclaimed, she said, basically a lifelong, lifelong picker. Lifelong picker. So she knew what she was picking. So unlike, like at no point was this considered a hoarder's home, but this was definitely she had, full. This was... She loved collecting. Absolutely. And, and everything she had, unless it got damaged in storage, it was all in pristine condition. So, yes. And it was, what was great is... It, uh, sh she could have uh, the most... Uh, you know, a rare piece of uh, Futura, uh, Roseville, I think it's Futura, or plastic salt and pepper shakers, you know, of Felix the Cat. She had everything. So I went and bought some things, and then I said, may I come back and bring someone? And then I waited and I got the reply, yes, bring uh, Patrick back. So we went back today. And what we're going to show you now are a few of the things that we were able to purchase out of uh, the of Diane's collection, uh, and her husband as well. Very nice, and um, and we so had we're just going to show you a few things. And we had a few people guess what you had, even with. Oh, the, they got with, it. With, so we've got. Uh, it is as I think it looks like Auntie Christie may have been the first one to answer it. It is a girly candle. Now spell girly. And as they are, as it is correctly being spelled in the chat although some of them are spelling the ending differently it is g u r yes. l and then the question is is it e y or y yes we're not randomly assigning male female <laughs> attributes it's not a girly you know uh it's spelled is it e y or is it just y i, I used to isn't this awful i've never carried them before so i actually i knew i knew the name but i didn't g u r l e y l e y that's what most people seem to be saying and if i remember it was maybe franklin Gurley who opened his factory i want to say in buffalo in the late 40s please don't this is in the washing yeah we machine. have not researched most of this, this stuff this is in the washing this machine. was just fun to pick up and this like, we just highlighting some ideas and i think it was somehow X, exxon or what would become exxon had like paraffin byproducts to the oh yeah that refinery. would make sense and they so they did mostly holiday candles you all you guys have the pilgrim candles in your attic they're coagulated because <laughs> no one ever burnt these <laughs> we were having that conversation no one ever burnt i mean who's gonna set santa's hat on fire <laughs> um but what's nice is Sometimes they get, you know, they get in the attic and they, they start to melt a little bit and they get crusty and dirty. He's really nice. And he's a nice eight inch girly candle. Yeah. And so what she had, the, the, again, she's a lifelong picker. She surrounded herself with the stuff that she loved. Uh, there was an and item. That's the thing. Yeah. And she, and she did, and she got, she had lifelong enjoyment out of it, but she recognized she needed, she was it's of time. an age that she wanted to be able to pass it on. Nobody in her family was interested. So, you know, she's doing it. And this was a case that Scott really laid the groundwork for it. I naturally kind of fell into it, but we both were very respectful of her time, respectful that she led us into her home. And she showed us, you know, took really great care in showing some of her collections. Now, we didn't buy everything that she showed us, uh, but we, one of the things that they did was she, they pulled up some boxes from the basement that Scott had not seen no. last week. They brought up the Christmas. And so that's where the girly candle mm -hmm. came from. And then this item, 
Um, there will be some more Christmas that we'll put into our videos later, but I pulled just a couple items that I wanted to show. And so this is a wooden German, what would most people would just colloquially refer to as a nutcracker, but this style is not a nutcracker because it is, and the little pipe that he's smoking kind of gives you a, a clue. His torso comes off, he's a smoker. And so you would put a little uh, smoking pastille in the, in the middle here, set that on fire, and then it's just kind of like a slow burn. And then you put the torso back on the little wire cage and then smoke will come out of his mouth. It won't come out of the pipe. It'll come out of his mouth. And so he, he would literally look like he's smoking. Is he a Christmas day? Is he a holiday? He is, oddly he has- He's got a shamrock. He's got a shamrock in his hat. He is a chimney sweep. And chimney sweeps, if they sh uh, shake your hand or give you a kiss, it is a sign of good luck. So for some reason, he also has a shamrock in his hat. Smokers, to my understanding, are always a Christmas smoker. So I'm going to still fall him under Christmas category, but he is not dressed in Christmas togs. Uh, but he is a chimney sweep. He's got the little wires on the, on the little uh, cord, one hanging by his side, then one over his shoulder. And he's in fantastic condition. She said she actually lived in Germany for a while. So this dates to the, I think she said 50s or 60s when Wiesbaden. she lived there in Wiesbaden. So this is a, is a genuine vintage uh, smoker. Personally, I actually don't have any of these in my collection. So this is gonna be one of those cases. I'm probably keeping this one. So sorry to tempt you all, but too bad. Um, this is just, it's gonna, it'll give me some great joy when I put Jeez. that out. Uh, every, I'll think of her every time. She was a super sweet woman. And she had some great stories and some great stuff. Uh, so I just, this happened to be the only Christmas one that I pulled over, but uh, there will be more Christmas in the video. So we had a couple comments coming in. So, so Auntie Christy says she's never seen one. Um, they never, still make them. I mean, I, I, I don't know if- I, Is I, it like a Black Forest, Cuckoo Clock Air? Definitely, yeah, and, and the same companies that would make, usually the same companies that make the Nutcrackers will make these as well. Nutcrackers are way more popular. They, they make them in bigger, different sizes. They make them in a lot of different styles. The smokers aren't as dynamic because un, until you light him, he just looks like a little figure. I, I knew what he was the minute I saw him. Um, no, you know, Scott didn't. You know, if you've, not, seen, I, yeah, if you've not seen a smoker, you wouldn't even know that his top half comes off. So anyone watching me in her house would have thought I was breaking him because I was literally ripping him his upper half off of his door, off his bottom. But I recognized what he was. So he is not marked, um, but I would say there's no reason for her to have made up the story that it came from Germany in the 50s to 60s. And just some of the patina on this one and on the inside, it was used. Patina. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. That it's, uh, it definitely, I think it definitely has, does have some age to him. And so I bought I. him to resell. Yeah, you and I me both. Patina too. Um, but I want to say, at least for a while, I'm going to keep him. He'll at least he'll at least survive a season in my in my home because I don't have one. I've sold some before uh, that are more modern than this one, and I just like the story. And you know, like I said, I will see it and I will think of her. So there will be more Christmas, and there's actually some really cool Christmas stuff that'll be coming up. Scott got I turned around, and Scott totally took advantage of me. No, and no, he I, didn't. I okay. May I recall for yes, you? Yes, you defend yourself. He's in the dining room. I'm in the living room. I, up comes this box. I open up some of the tissue paper, and it's the little Santa head mugs. And I said, Patrick, before I open all of these, are you interested in any of these Santa head mugs? And the reply was, No, I'm good in here. <laughs> So he he so won that one. Now <laughs> I won a few good things too. He that did. He missed. He, he missed got out on the Jadeite batter yes. bowl, which yes. I didn't see. Yeah. And then again, this was there was so much great stuff. Oh. It was just difficult to kind of look around things and shift things around. And it just happened. You pull the turn the right corner, open the right box, and so he has. Once he unloaded that box, there's some amazing pieces in there. Well, and there's nothing more. You know, to to. It's fun shopping at antique stores at flea markets, but when you get into somebody's home, you know, when you meet people and you hear the stories, 
that I got this here and she used to sell, um, where did she say she sold at the Georgetown? Um, maybe we're not supposed to tell all that. But. Well, she, she sold in, she actually used, again, this was decades she, ago, but she sold in Adamstown where yeah. I was. And so yeah, she sold up there. She had sold to people that we won't drop those. Oh, names, right. But we are it's, just, to do that. it's like it, you could stay, we could have stayed like all day and just enjoyed going all over the house and talking about things. And that's what really makes it special. And she got a kick out of what we were getting a kick out of. She was, she, yeah, you could see, cause she was delighted. I think that you are like, if you, you know, I don't know what'll happen to me, but it's a delight when someone shows interest and you want to share things that you find joy in. And it's not even, the, it's not even, well, that's worth $10. No, that's worth, the money, right? Right. We didn't dick her. The money was not a, you know, um, anyway. We're she talking. knew we were going to resell was, them. Right. So like we there were, was yeah, at no she, point right, and where, like, were no. we misleading her, but she could tell that we weren't just saying, oh, that's valuable. I want that. That's valuable. I want that. No, I funny. like for example, not to like cut in line of, of Scott, but cut. you know, this, this is my channel. Um, this is, you know, you can't be on a trusty huckster channel without seeing coasters. Huckster. Yeah. And these are like some of the coolest cluster. coasters that I've ever had. No, wait, are they nude? Are they no, nude? they're not nude. Okay. These, these would be, uh, these would be great for Christina, uh, that was on, um, Katie's channel last week, her Tiki collection. Ooh. Cause we've got the little, uh, the little hula dancer, uh, pair. And then this one, I uh, got the, uh, the Spanish dancer. The style of the coaster is a traditional depression glass coaster, but it's been decaled with these ladies. Now, I don't know if the decal was originated when the, they were manufactured. Um, so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna, a lot of, none of this really has been researched. So I'm gonna have to look these up, but she saw me going for these and she's just like, I, she basically asked her like, oh, wow, I'm surprised you're interested in those. I'm like, oh, no, 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 I need coasters. And she laughed and she's, and then she pointed out where some more were. So I've got two really cool coasters, um, you know, because I'm going to have coasters. I'll probably, I'll put them into a live sale. I'll look them up just to see, like, it was just a combination of a depression glass with a DIY sticker. Are they can-can dancers? Uh, what are they doing? Uh, this one I think is Spanish dancing because she's got the big flamenco charro skirt you know, the big with the, with the uh, flared legs. And that was definitely, she, she, she's got a palm tree around. Yeah. I was gonna say, she's basically got the grass skirt going on. Um, and they, it's interesting cause they're both pairs. Hula -lula. Like they look like they're identical. So it's like two, two label or two decals of the same person. So, you know, she didn't know. She even said, she's like, I don't know if those are just decals added or if they were manufactured that way. How do you do that with those shoes on? <laughs> I, I can't, I don't know. So yeah, so I got coasters and it was, again, she just was, she was tickled that I was attracted to something that she thought was fun. And she's like, you know, they're probably not worth all that much. I'm like, but it doesn't really matter. You know, this is fun. You know, I'll sell coasters on my channel all, all day long and they, I don't sell them for a lot of money because they're just fun because I will just totally uh, expose Scott here. I walk into Scott's home and he has no coasters. What the hell? I, I do. They just we hadn't had a we hadn't had a beverage yet. So. so I grabbed one of my coasters and started using it. So you know it's like the purchase purchase has already supported itself. My favorite sea is, season is the autumn, as you may know. I love everything about it, and when I saw this, I had to have it for myself. And so I told Diane, I'd like to buy that for me for my own collection because it's so beautiful. And of course you're gonna, you're gonna recognize right away Roseville and sometimes people say, well, how do you know it's not the reproduction? When you get out there and you handle it and you look at it and you feel it and you smell it, well, not smell it, but you, it doesn't compare to the repros. It just doesn't compare, it's just, I love it. You know, I mean, you can see, you don't even, you don't have to, what's great is when you don't get to the point where you have to turn it upside, you go, okay, there's no, that's the real thing. Right. So, um, this and that is, was one I could even tell from across the room. Oh yeah. It was just, it, the glaze is so beautifully done. Prickle, prickly. What do you say? I think you said prickly pear. No, it's not prickly, prickly apple. Prickly berry, prickled prickly. apple. You said you'd looked it up and I can't Pickled remember. Beets. It was one I'd never seen. I and I, I've carried a Roseville 
Um, it was one I had not seen. And she said it wasn't particularly common. Yeah. Um, I'm attracted to it because of the colors and I like to decorate. It's from the 30s. You know, I love that. And I like the colors. And this is the piece that I decided that I would keep. So I'll keep this uh, and remember my fun day shopping um, and spending time and then I have a nice memento. So that's it. And by the way, speaking of Roseville, this is a great time to buy what you love. Great, big collectible 70s, 80s, 90s. Then we saw, I think we're going to see coming back, but it's a wonderful time to buy lots of pottery, Roseville Hallwell or all of that. Uh, you can find it inexpensive and, and buy it because you love it and you want to decorate with it. That's what's what I would say. Absolutely. And it's so prolific that when you find it, it's fun to be able to, like, you know, whether it's prickly pear, prickly, whatever, that would have been made in a console bowl and matching candlesticks. candlesticks. Yeah, they're, and, they're and, you know, all, there'll be multiple shapes. And this is a fairly large one. This is actually a, fairly, a well, very nice can, size. Can't you see uh, uh, a branch off of a fall tree with the, leaf, with the leaves on it and everything? I love it. So, so when you find something you love like that, it's you can go deep into it or you go broad and you could just say, okay, I want everything that's in the blue colorway and you'll find all kinds of stuff. So yeah, Roseville. And it's one of those that it took me a long time to know or feel confident when I would see a reproduction to say okay is this reproduction? and i had a reproduction in my collection for quite, quite some time and i would kept convincing myself that oh no i'm pretty sure it's good and then i saw one of the better pieces that they made and i'm like okay now i get the difference now i you know. see it yeah, it's, it's in that coloration it's so important it's the way they were know. painted and you just you just have to experience the it. only way to learn go to good shows go to these dealers that have been dealers uh, deal, i don't like the word dealer you know especially who are passionate about it and they've collected it for years you'll learn they'll teach you um, and it's that human connection it's so if you have a passion for it get out from behind your computers and get out there and go to shows if you can um, you know uh, it's good antique shows major cities the good antique shows really is learn. key because that yeah. you do you learn so much and with, with things loosening up a little bit and they will shows they are love getting it. scheduled when you when you find you know when 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 you go up to someone and you show interest in what they love, they'll grab you and they won't let you go. It's like, yeah, let me tell you about my model airplane collection. And <laughs> five, five hours later, I don't know, want to know anymore. Yes. But that's how you learn. It's so much better than you know, just looking at pictures on Pinterest and things. And I'm not against that, but it's a privilege and a joy to get out and actually see the things and and things are opening up in the country and we're and roseville is a unique group of of collectors because there is such a prolific uh you know there's so many fakes that are out there they are very passionate about defending keeping the value of the roseville up you know they recognize that these fakes are really hurting the value of the good stuff because like people like me couldn't tell and wouldn't know like well how do i know if i'm paying a hundred dollars but you know when you're learning you, they want to share that information and just don't be shy just ask is any is it i can't yeah see. so i got a couple of comments that came in so uh book bewitch shared that she Swallowed her Werther's when you pulled out that vase. So she loved your. She, she swallowed. She loved. She, she loved. My expression is I soiled my depends, but I, <laughs> I, I actually claim. I guess that's yeah. You swallowed your word. I love it. You swallowed. Let's see. What are you gonna do if I show it to you again? <laughs> so you spit, spit it up and then spit swallow it, it back again. And soil your depends at the same time. <laughs> so Carrie feels that that uh, Roseville is awesome. It is. And Barb, Barb from Winking Owl Antiques. So thanks so much, Barb. Hey. I, I missed, I missed you coming on. So hi, Barb. Barb. Uh, so she was saying that is a good one to keep. Um, oops, Carrie from Austin feels that you and I should have a weekly podcast. So I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what that means. But that's a good thing. But uh, I hope you have, I hope you guys are having fun. Um, and Julie agreed that the the piece is stunning, and that the, it, you're right. It's the sheen that's real like that's where you start when you and kind of you have to see them side by side i was just talking katie from vintage and vinyl is on the chat i always joke with her because i i can tell fostoria coin when i can mm. see the good one and the bad one i have to see them side by side and then when i go see an individual piece i have to sit there and remember okay what did the good one look like is this the older one or is this the reproduction one so you just have to get exposed to it it's funny i i, I have an aunt or aunt some people say but we say aunt and she 
has always had the Faustoria American pattern, yes. Mm -hmm. So we also know there was Jeanette Cube, right? And I would sometimes find pieces for her when they were broken for her to replace. And here's what she would do. I would say to my aunt, okay, I've got, here's a sherbet and it's um, uh, Faustoria American. She wouldn't look at it. What would she do? She would do this. <laughs> yep, gotta feel She'd it. She'd say, that's not false story. Wow. How do you know? It's the fire polishing and the quality of the glass. Yep. And that's, that's where the hole is. You've got to feel it, you know? And I'm not dissing the Jeanette Cube, but she, you she need to know which is she which. She would feel it and she'd say, this is the false story. People will other. collect Jeanette Cube, but you, then they want Jeanette. They don't want Faustoria. Yeah. And I know Katie has like picked fights in chats because people will be claiming so a optic pattern or whatever. They're like, oh, this is Faustoria. And you know, Katie can prove which pieces are and aren't. And it's the same designer. I can never remember his name. The guy who designed it for Faustoria in 1915. Katie probably knows. Then, yeah, Katie. He went and, and designed Cube for Jeanette you know, 20 years later. So this is interesting. So Pat Mayer is saying that she loves Roseville, but only sees damaged pieces. And you can still learn from the damaged pieces, but of course their value is going to be significantly reduced. Um, but you know, I had a damaged piece in my collection for a long time because I liked the looks of it. I wasn't going to resell it. It just, I put it in a curio cabinet that damaged on the back and you know, I knew it was there, but I didn't need to point it out to anybody else. Well, now that I was fondling this, you know that I've bought an Art Deco syrup jug. I love them. And that was interesting for me to watch because this is, this is an area of collecting I'm not knowledgeable in that as she's talking about the different stories, it was in, like literally it was in a large kitchen bowl that was this, I think there were two other pieces and right from the beginning, she's like, oh, that one with the beige top, that's from Taiwan. Like she just was telling us, don't even, don't even bother, you know, don't waste your time with it so that he could focus on the, the higher quality piece. Now Scott knew which ones were the higher quality, but she knew too, and she wasn't, she wasn't trying to fool us. Yeah, so it was really a fun experience because she knew what she had. And there were a couple of times where I picked out a piece that um, she's like, oh, that's Wedgwood. And I'm like, no, actually it was Spode. And it was the Spode Christmas tree. And I just like, well, you know, actually, I think this, actually this one's Spode. And then she's like, oh my God, I can't believe I got that wrong. Like, yeah, we learned, you're good. Us, like, you know, we, you just, we learn, I, 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 I make mistakes every day. I learn from other people. I think this is, no, no, no. And that's what's uh, fascinating to me is learning new things every day. And I was expecting, we know that Hazel Atlas made so many of these containers, and it's not. It's another company, and uh, my progressive lenses aren't going to let me tell you Was who it made stamped? It. Yeah. Well, I thought you, you'd you, looked before. I thought we didn't see it. You have better eyes than I do. Patent pending. Yeah, but there's more on there. Yeah, let's see. He can't see it either. Nope. Let's see. Give me your bag. Find this. It's not Gemco. It's not Anchor Hawking. And it's not Hazel Atlas. Med, Med, Medco? Med I just get, it's Medco. Medco. Which is a name I don't know. Medco, not Gemco. I don't know Medco. Yeah, Medco Products. Does it give us a state? New York. Where in New York? Buffalo? Just New York. It is a Medco Products, New York, NY. It's somewhere in New York. Okay, so who, the thrifter I know in New York is D. D, up in, up in Niagara. Who made Medco? Yeah, so that, yeah, so like I said, a lot of this, we just kind of decided yeah. to spontaneously go live. And we hadn't researched all this stuff so yet. So a red plastic top, but I really like the deco design. So we're right in the 1930s on that. Because there was a couple of pieces of glass. I'll show you the next one. Uh, this one I picked up and it's, an, it's a gorgeous piece. And at the beginning when I first saw it, because admittedly her home wasn't particularly well lit. And so when I saw this, it was at the top of a curio cabinet. I thought that what you're seeing in the light was a gold painted rim. And I'm like, oh, that's unfortunate. It doesn't look like it goes all the way around. But I'm like, you know what? It's still a nice looking piece. I like the shape to it. Totally looks mid-century modern to me. It's a divided glass dish. And then we cleaned it up and realized it's amberina. Yeah. So you've got you this see? great amber like ring, like just a super shallow touch of it. So it's, I, it's still amberina because it's got the amberina and then it yeah, goes to red. Yeah, before the sun went down. This, is, face, yeah, this you, is facing the west. And before the sun went down, we were holding it. Was it like, had wow, brilliance. It was, it was absolutely gorgeous. It was that almost girl like it was, was on fire. It was Isn't that like, a song? Yeah. So this one, though, 
we ha I haven't done the Google Lens. I haven't done anything to research this one yet. If anyone recognizes this, I'd love to get a tip on what this, who made this. Our guess, or Scott's guess, admittedly, was Viking. Um, but you know, it's a good guess, Ellie Smith. You like, know, who I don't else? know my mid-century. So, and I'm not special. I'm not an expert in it either. So, if I figure, you know, some of you came on. I appreciate those of you who gave up your uh, Monday nights to jump onto this. All 72 of you. Um, if you happen to know what this is, I would love. And so you can see there's a little divided piece in the middle. And then the way it was done on the back, which I was fascinated by, it's got like a little indentation in the shoulder where they, where they pierced the divided dish into the glass. It is a molded piece, but I don't even feel the, um, I don't even feel a seam in the base. I actually feel a little, little bit of one bump there. They fire polished the, the crap out of this. So this was high end when it was made, um, but I don't know whose it is. Put so, your peanuts on one side and your pickled onions on the other. There you go. So great, a great little piece, you know, a nice small diminutive size, but that great swirl, that great mid-century swirl to it. All right, two more little quick things and we're, we're gonna, I don't know who made it, but I love it. That, isn't that a cool piece? I love it. It's a planter, yeah. There's nothing on the bottom. No, no, no. It's probably Japan. You know, the Commodore sticker falls off. The Japan stickers fall off. There's some ink on the bottom. So uh, just uh, let's, I always get, I'm hyper. And I have to hold it still. So. And in pristine condition, every one of those, yeah, every nothing. one of those fins is completely Not smooth. Not a chip on the fin. Nothing has come off of him. Are He's, they angelfish? I would say they're angelfish. One going for a deep dive. Uh, this looks mid-century. I would absolutely. Doesn't this look a 50s? Can't you see like a snake plant coming out of it? What would you put in it? So Pamela Blanchard, hi Pam. Uh, so she's saying it looks like hull. The, the color is different than what I would have expected from a hull, hull but. Yeah. I'm feeling Japan. It's sometimes, and a lot, we were talking before, sometimes color on TV, depending right. on the setting on your screen and whatnot. I, I get a Japan, I get a made in Japan feel on it. And the weight to um, it is a little bit lighter weight than some of the hull, the swans. See the and numbers like down that. here? Oh yeah. That's not like the German numbers, but on a lot of uh, a lot on a lot of the made made in Japan, you see those little those numbers on the bottom. Proud American bottom. says makes him hungry for fish sticks. Yes. So, so that, I've got some tartar sauce. You better watch so it out. So it's a fish called Wanda. That's where they ate the angelfish. Wanda the angelfish. And welcome to Mary Cannon. She says she's new here tonight, so I don't know if you're new to my channel, maybe you knew Mary? Scott. But thanks so much for joining, Mary. And thanks, Pat, for Pat Mayer, for uh, asking people to hit the thumbs up. That's appreciated. Uh, I only have one more thing to show. So it looks like, yeah, so it looks like the only suggestion was maybe Hull. And I had a suggestion for the red dish as the Amberina is possibly Martinsville. So I will definitely look that one up because that was not one that came up well, in conversation. Well, now remember, of course, New Martinsville became Viking. Viking, oh, okay. Viking in the 50s. I think New Martinsville had a lot of trouble in the 30s. When I say trouble, I mean it. it yeah, somebody else is going to know more, more than I do on this, but New Martin, Viking, I shouldn't talk when I don't know what I'm talking about. New Martinsville became Viking. You guys can fill in the blank. They either went into receivership or they bought it, but a lot of original... A lot of the new Martinsville pieces stayed around for production with Viking. The same way Ho Anchor Hocking bought Lancaster glass and some of the old Lancaster molds show up as Lancaster, but then later also as um, Anchor Hocking. Yeah, things move around so much sometimes. So, uh, but I will, I will but definitely yeah, check could, into that as yeah, an option. That's a good, I think that might be, that could be it, yeah. Uh, all right, so another piece that I picked up. This one is uh, marked. This was Maiko China, Japan. This one was, and I'll kind of, I'll see if I can show you the way I saw it. So when I first saw it, she it was basically on. like that. <gasps> and she was surrounded by Christmas ornaments and matchbooks and just different stuff. And she, but she was really low. And so I thought, well, maybe she's like a half doll or something and her low, like she's sitting or maybe it's just the top half of a porcelain doll. And then I f discovered that she was sitting amongst her own dress and I fell in love with her. 
So she's Which this, can happen if you don't. Absolutely. If you're not so she's this sweet little dresser, like little pin dish, jewelry dish. And I'm going to assume it's for a dresser just because of the sweetness of how it's painted. This wouldn't be for food. You know, that this was really, whether it was part of a dresser set or if it was just a standalone little, she's in perfect condition. She's got that outstretched arms, you know, both of them, the fingers are still in place. Her look, her, you know, her coiffed hair, you know, probably I would put her into the, the 30s. Um, just super sweet with a, the sweet pink florals. I just fell in love with her. So not so much in love that I'm keeping her. She's going on sale, but um, when, and this was another one, when I picked this up, she's like, oh, that's one of my favorite pieces. It seemed like half the stuff we picked up was some of her favorite pieces. Because she bought what she loved. She bought what she loved. And so this one, and she even said, she's like, oh, I think she's German. And then I flipped her over wow. and for, for I would have thought she was German as well, but she is a Jap Japan well, piece for a line, but she's very nicely done. And I was just super happy. I love all, I love my old porcelain and uh, Japan or European. I'm totally fine with her. And I just think she's got a great, and she's got a European look, you know, she's got a great look. So I definitely, you know, had, had her into the mix. And then, uh, well, uh, the only other thing that I had was, I thought these were fun. Again, I, she's pointing me to the other coasters. And these were coasters I haven't seen before, probably from the 60s, I would guess. They are the, um, the guy that did the Adams Family. Is it Edward Gorey? I can't remember, I can't remember his first name. Gorey is his last name. Lurch. Uh, but yeah, so Gorey, which was very fitting to do the Adams Family. It's a set of four coasters. They're cork-backed. They're a little, you know, pressed on the side. They're a laminated cover, like a plastic lamination. You know, so probably 60s, maybe going into the 70s, that have the uh, set of four that have the little illustrations of uh, Edward Gorey. So we've got that one. We've got a little lamp, you know, holding a little lamp. You know, it's just got that dark, as, as somebody just as scrolled past and spooky, that's exactly how he drew. He drew the Adams Family. He drew spooky. He drew very dark and dismal and grim, you know, images. These are not bad. You know, there's, these definitely have a dark tone to them. You know, we've got a lot of this lamp carrying going on. Um, but it's just a set of fun, you know, four fun coasters that I picked them up. She said, well, I don't think they're that valuable. I'm like, but it's not all about value. You know, we want to have fun when we're buying and selling stuff too. And I just thought these were cool. Like, I'm not particularly a gory aficionado, but I recognize the art immediately because they're not signed. There's no indication. I don't know if there's something pressed into the edge. But these will definitely be going into a live sale because they're just, they're just fun. They're just fun little coasters. Speaking of fun, it wouldn't be a fun weekend without your speed and whipper. Is it speed and whipper? I think that's an ampersand in the middle. So yes, I think it's speed and whipper. Speeded whipper? Speed, speed and whipper. Speed and whipper. Now what is coming out of this box? First of all, the box, patent pending. What are you feeling on the box? I'm feeling 50s, maybe even late 40s. Yeah, on I, the box. Maybe it, 40s. The simplicity of the graphics, I'd say even 40s. Yeah, I think you, you might be right, Patrick. I think you are right. Anyway, what's in it? The suspense is killing us, isn't it? I, no, I did not wash the glass, so there might be some cloudiness to the glass. But I don't think this was ever used. Now, uh, when it comes to the culinary arts, <laughs> you know, I can make meatloaf, a pork chop. I can make a pumpkin pie. I don't know what you do with this. There is no explanation on this box. So, you kitchen folk, uh, what does it say? Patent pending speed and whipper. And then it says two cups, 16 ounces. And then it says, um, do not work plunger above this line. Well, I wouldn't dream of working my plunger above that line. So I don't know what you plunge, but this is glass. And, and then um, we have this wonderful, is it chrome? That's like chrome? Mm -hmm. No, stainless steel. Yeah, maybe stainless steel. I don't know what it is. And so it's like, this is to aerate? And that's, I feel there's something, there's something in there about the fact those holes are very small. Now this is not an ice crusher. I'm no. familiar with the ice crushers from the 30s. They had blades. Very different from this It thing. definitely has to be a liquid because those holes are so small. But I question, they're so small, I'm not even sure would it use an egg. Because initially we thought, I was, we had said mayonnaise. 
but I guess if you squish the egg down enough, it would be thin enough to go through those holes. So it feels like there's some merit so to put the lid judging those holes. on the top, and then, with great excitement, we plunge. You ready? Yeah, and it makes some pretty rough noises. So Pat Mayer is saying it's a whipped cream maker. And are you guessing, Pat, or have you seen them before? Because my concern with a whipped cream would be at some point when you pushed it back down, you would smash all the cream you just whipped up. So I'm not sure how you would keep the fluff as fluff. So, I mean, I, if you know, I'm not trying to challenge you. I just, that's the way my mind works is like, what would this be used for? But a couple people are now coming in as a whipped cream maker. It doesn't have blades. No, there's so, no blades. It's um, nothing so sharp. There's the no person blade. that asked if it was a nut chopper. No, no nut chopper. It would chopper. definitely not be a nut chopper. We're not chopper. crushing ice. We're not, and it no would, sharp. And it sits pretty, it, basically the bottom of the glass is flat. So it goes into, it sits flat on the bottom of the glass. Not a potato so, ricer. So there's no additional space or anything underneath it. It'll crush whatever it goes, do, goes down. Um, this is, you know So what? no, Proud American, it was not see, as seen on TV. You don't get the Ginsu knife with this one. I do not, who needs to go out and buy one of those bullet things? Put your old green beans and broccoli in here and pour some carrot juice in it and there's your morning smoothie. All right, so Pat admits that it was a guess, but it's a very educated guess, and a lot of people are saying for frothing whipped cream. So there was an eggnog question, but whipped cream makes sense. And so that, and maybe, maybe the, the, the motion is more upward, and so that way the whipping would stay up the top. Because I guess mine was just, you've got these three little panels with those little holes that like once you got it really whipped up, you would think like when you folded it into a cake or whatever, it would kind of thin it out. But doesn't this out. look like, almost unused? This is all the kind of like that early hard plastic, and I I can see no. That's as clean as it can be. And, and there's no. You could hear that gri that grating sound with the metal against the glass. The glass is in pristine condition. It it didn't get the scratches. It didn't get the marks. It's not chipped in any way. I don't think it it's was. It's just one of those. It's fun, you know. I I always sometimes I do theme shows called in Granny's Kitchen on Granny's Kitchen Counter. I like to so it's like these kind of things I like to put together and it's almost kind of like curate a sale. So the it's other suggestion fun. is if you if, as a butter churn, yeah, that and that could that would actually make sense too because as you pushed it down to the bottom, you you're from the Midwest, don't you? Make your own butter and quilts out there. Quilts. I used to own, own a quilt shop. Um, <laughs> She you actually said she had quilts, and I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> I spent 10 years doing that. The other thing which it was a merit to that, which he discovered as he put it away, the top does not screw on. It, yeah, just, it just sits, sits there. there. So when you try and put it in the box, your hands aren't long enough. How long have, we, actually... how long have we been broadcasting? Uh, 52 minutes. Oh, no, we need to wrap it up. Yeah. So that was everything we were just going to show. Uh, oh, we had, we had a well, little special surprise that I didn't know anything about. What I made, you know what I might do? Because this is going live. Ooh, egg creams. Oh, I like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is going live on yours. Yep. You know what I might have you do? We were going to refilm the whole thing as a thrift haul and put it on mine. Maybe I could get the file of this show. Can you do that? Mm -hmm. And I put it on mine? Yeah. So we don't have to refilm the whole thing? True. Well, we can talk about that. Yeah, we'll figure that out on camera. <laughs> but... For those of you who watch me, sometimes you'll know that I've started a, this is the 1947 1003 Household Tips, and we're going to end our program. Patrick, will you draw a number between 1 and 1003? And we're going to go back to 1947 and find a household tip. And this is not, this is not pre-scheduled. He, he literally, as I'm turning to go live, he's like, oh, let's do this. Yeah, so, I, told, I was like, I'm going to have you do something. Well, what are you going to have yeah, me do? I and, no I said, and I said, I'm not telling you. Yeah, so this is going to have some spontaneity. So, spontaneity. My favorite number is three, so I'm going to go 333. That'll be my number, 333. All right, hold on. What is it again? 333, Mr. Senility. Ah. Uh. Uh, entertain yourselves while I see if I can... <laughs> okay, here it is. 333. Three. It's really... It's all, can you see? People had better eyes back then, evidently, when they read by candlelight. <laughs> and the lighting is not that great in here, and I'm, I'm still struggling with my uh, progressive lenses. 
Don't make fun of me. You'll get them. Oh, trust me, I need them. You'll good. And I've already, you, I already carry. Do, I didn't bring my cheaters here, but I, I have them on this trip. Trust me. All right, three, three, three. Here's what it says, Patrick. I don't need this. It says, it says, don't pour sour milk or cream down the drain. Did you know that? I did not. If the cream is just turning sour, restore it to sweetness by adding a pinch of baking soda. Ew. Wouldn't that make it fizz? Uh, if it's really sour, you throw it away. I mean, this is, this is not depression, it's 1947, but people were, you know. All right, if it's really sour, what do you do? I have no idea. You use it as a topping for soups, in salad dressings, gravies, and in baking. In recipes that call for sweet milk, add just one half teaspoon of baking soda for each cup of sour milk and deduct two teaspoons of baking powder. Okay, what year is this? Is this actually interwar? Is this during the war? This is 1947. Oh, 47, okay. I thought it was 43. So I was like, okay, because you wanted, you wanted things to last and save. Interesting. But it's true. I, do, I, I have seen lots of old recipes that call for sour milk. Yeah, you're right. And today we would probably just put Greek yogurt in it or something. My personal favorite household tip I ever, I think it was like an Ellen episode. There was a discussion that says in order to keep your uh, brown sugar from, uh, keep your brown sugar soft. And the person was interrupted and said, brown sugar is supposed to be soft. And that's my life. Like I grew up with this brick of brown <laughs> sugar. Ch ch to a cup of brown sugar. Are you kidding me? <laughs> How about a four inch piece? Uh, so yes, that, that's my favorite household tip. Uh, you're supposed to put a, a, a piece of bread is actually the Martha Stewart tip on your, uh, and then the bread becomes rock hard. But uh, that's my, my favorite interaction on the kitchen tips. Um, so I think we, 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 are gonna, we are gonna close up. So we'll figure something out with the video. They, we actually, there's some really cool kitchens, uh, Christmas stuff we do wanna show. So we'll end up doing something with some videos. We probably won't be doing any, any more, any, another live video, but we, you know, I got, I got Scott to do a live video. It was fun to do it. So, you know, he only put on his makeup for a little bit. You know, he, he, he was very fast about it, so I give him credit. Oh, and let me say, <laughs> last, I know, I don't know, it's, it's, um, about two nights ago, this one was doing one of his live sales. I'm getting ready to go to bed. It's like, you're an hour before me or something. I don't know, but I go to bed early. And so I, t I turn him on and at that second, he's modeling. Well, no, he's not. He's showing these 1930s hair nets. Well, I love the thirties. And as a joke, I typed in, Oh, what a coincidence. I'm lounging right here in my 1930s hairnet. And this one says, no offense, Scott, but I don't think you have enough hair to require a hairnet. I've got hair on the top of my head. I want you to see it. <laughs> it's a bad haircut. Isn't that awful? And so I stay corrected. It, it, it is a very thick mop of yes. hair that requires those hairnets. So whoever I've, bought them needs to ship them to Scott. I've always so had- So he has his hairnet. I've always had a, a high forehead. You know, grass doesn't grow on a busy street. <laughs> Excellent. And on that note, now I think we'll wrap up. <laughs> so we've got the beautiful skyline yeah. of... Uh, oh, not my land I, was, I just touched it. I'm like, okay, I hope that you doesn't touch go it, anywhere. You can touch it, knock it over. Uh, the beautiful skyline of Philadelphia behind us. You, got the, um, you get to play the game. The uh, Christmas... Old, the Chris, is, that the, is that the wedding cake? We call it the wedding cake. It's the old so newspaper the white, building the white, up there. The white one. There we go. The white building that's peeking out the top. That is the uh, wedding really cake building. You can't really see. If you look over here, you turn the camera, that we can show them the... Uh, look over here. I don't know. They can't see, but it's... Well, I guess they can see a little bit. Yeah, so... Don't look at my dirty windows. <laughs> so that is what we can see out the window of Scott in... Uh, what do you say? City, city center, center C city, center, center city, center city. Center city so he is part of Center City, Philadelphia. Uh, walking right. distance to Independence Hall and all the fantastic things downtown. So uh, we were gonna. Well, we'll just finish up things now. I appreciate all ninety six yeah, of you joining in. Coming, this was like a 
a little spontaneous thing. We just popped on and it was fun. And yeah. thanks for joining us. I didn't have my StreamYard account. Blah, 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 blah. So we just kind of, we winged it and it worked out. I had to, I probably kept looking down, but I could follow the comments. So I appreciate everyone joining. And I hope you liked what you saw. Uh, there were a couple questions about when these items will be up for sale. Um, I will say in my case, and maybe even in Scott's, you know, if you are interested in something, reach out to us. Um, there's a, there was a question that uh, somebody was asking, how can they get a hold of you? Yeah, how, how can they reach I you? Have, I have um, an eBay, if, I have an eBay store, and if you watch, I have a YouTube channel as well. Uh, the link to my eBay store is always in the description box below the videos, and then you can just look at any item in the store and send me a message through that. It'll come right to me. That's the easiest way is to go through the eBay email. So yeah. if you go to, maybe we can put the link in the bottom. I'm not sure. Yeah, I can, I can edit. I can put some notes. I'll try and do that tonight but, um, on my phone. But uh, I will put the link to his eBay. And so there's a message option through eBay. So for the, the people that were asking. Yeah, you can ask questions about things. Yeah. And I, what I do is, um, I do have people ask, like, when is that going to be for sale? Uh, you, if you watch my YouTube channel, you'll always know when something's for sale because it'll be in a kitchen counter thrift haul. I do these little kitchen counter thrift hauls right out there. And when things are up and ready to go, I have a big backlog of things. And to be honest, um, I'm getting my second and final COVID shot tomorrow. Um, and we're starting to open up here. Why am I saying all that? Um, things are really hectic. He's on the go, get so busy, if you, if you get him through I'll eBay, that's eventually. what he tracks. Because yeah, no. that's where he sells everything through eBay. He is not on social media. I'll put the things up. Um, so yeah, so watch his YouTube channel, and I guess you probably comment. But, think, on, but if you have a question, if you want to know about something, just ask me a question through the eBay channel, and then I can tell you when it's whenever it's going to be for sale. And I'm going to sell everything that you saw, except that really nice Roseville base, which is I'm going to keep. And I will be selling everything except for now the smoker. Uh, so for the person who's interested, who said that they needed the uh, uh, skirted lady in their lives, um, I will also drop my my co contact information into the chat or into the uh, notes of this video. But you can find me through uh, so social media. I'm on Instagram at th mercantile, short for trusty huckster mercantile. You can direct message me through that. Uh, or you can go through my link tree address, which is uh, l i n k t r dot e e slash t h mercantile. That is all the different ways of contacting me as well. And Katie might be able to drop that into the chat if she could. Um, and maybe she's, she and Nate might be desperately trying to find uh, Scott's. They could drop it in the chat. But we're about to sign off, so the chat will disappear. Um, but we you have, can reach we both have some of us. Cold, cold pizza to finish it. Yeah. And I have no problem. I mean, all of these items will be going up for sale, and I have no problem if somebody's interested ahead of time. You know, it's, the, it's the, the bonus you get for sitting in on some of my videos. So I'm not as great on the haul videos as Scott is, but this was a fun way to do them live, and hopefully we will get some more videos up. And uh, thank you, Jay Goodwin, saying we are both wonderful. Thank you. You can read that? Yes. He can see. We're both looking at a little thing. And co comments yeah, all of this up. is off of my phone. How can, how so. can you read that? It's, it's surprising I can. If you go about another six inches, I probably wouldn't be able to see it at all. I cannot um, see it. I can't so read it. Sh shambles to share, take care. That one was harder because that word was really long. <laughs> but, I can't yes. see anything. I can't read We're basically anything. the same age, so now he's going to be jealous of my eyesight. I but, am. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for all of you for joining us. I really appreciate it. This and, is fun. you know, yeah, just watch the rest of our channels. If you, if, since you're on my channel, if you've not subscribed to Scott, it's under, is it put, the old Curiosity Shop? I don't remember. I don't know. It's, it's, it's old, old Curiosity Shop. You it, should be able to Google it, but I will also try and get the links you'll into probably get my the comments. Dickens novel or something yeah. like that. <laughs> but he does some great haul videos. There's so much, there's such great resources around here to find some great history. He's just got some great so stuff. So much here so to find. Definitely to follow his uh, videos experience. as well. So thanks so much for joining me, everybody, and you all have a great night. Okay.